Stand by to launch FanStream Sports. Three, two, one. Let's start. Hello, sports fans. Welcome to FanStream Sports. Nothing, nothing but pure sports. As pirate fans, and I want to be very clear about this. At pirate, as pirate fans, we have so little. No one feels bad for us. The Steeler fans or Penguins fans, always in the mix, always in the discussion, always postseason. As pirate fans. We have so little, and we don't ask for much. So, when news breaks this morning of the prodigal son returning home, Andrew McCutcheon almost brings a tear to your eye. I'm excited, even if it doesn't mean anything as far as their success on the field. Yeah, uh, it's definitely kind of just, if, if anything, it's kind of a cool day. Uh, <laughs> right. Um, you know, it sounds like, you know, he's going to come back and finish out his career in Pittsburgh. Uh, he came up, I believe, in 09 to the team. Certainly resurrected him. And, you know, when he left, they flopped. So um, it's exciting. It's exciting what it, what it will mean. And will he be DH? You know, will he play in the outfield? What would all those things look like remain? to be seen, but he's certainly the leader, a leader. So um, could that have just a a locker room effect um, on how to be a professional and things like that? Yeah. And that's, that's kind of where, where the the pirates seem to be headed this off season. Uh, I of course noticed you're wearing the, the, the white Jersey of the black and gold. Uh, It makes you proud even for a brief moment to wear the colors again. Uh, And so on the black and gold daily blitz, Presented by DSP Media Online, brought to you by FanStream Sports. We bring you a pirate edition, a rare pirate edition. Uh, you know, we've been in, in gross in football for so long, but um, but it is nice to see them, the the uh, the, um, the team, the front office, uh, make some moves. McCutcheon wasn't the only move they've made so far this offseason. They've added several veterans, um, albeit probably past their prime, but this isn't like like the, the the Joe Randa or the Jeremy Burnett signings when they thought that, you know, they were grabbing a name uh, that didn't fit the mold of the team. I mean, they're adding pieces here that seem to, you know, if for no other reason, you know, they'll be, they'll be, they'll be good leaders in the clubhouse um, and they would attract potential trade bait. I don't think that's what happened with, with McCutcheon. Um, I think, like you said, this is his, this is his, his his legacy that he he'll go out on and um uh one year five million which is actually probably more than I people might expect um but it certainly has a storybook feel and finish to it uh and for a team and a fan base that hasn't had a lot to be proud of again the results might not be there but it gives it gives this team a different look a different feel a different atmosphere people are going to be excited to go to the ballpark, even for just a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I look at it from a pipeline. My, I'm excited from a pipeline standpoint more than anything. You got Henry Davis, uh, the number one pick a couple of years ago. They have the number one pick this year in the draft. Um, last year they took Tamar Johnson, the shortstop. So by all indicators, they should have the one of the better uh, major league baseball pipelines i think it's a little ironic uh and nobody's really talking about at least the radio i listened to today that the player that we dealt that we got in return for the uh mccutcheon trade is actually requested he's requested to be traded that being one brian reynolds uh and you know uh it's kind of a shame in the sense that i think he's definitely been their best player the last few years uh, but he wants out. He he wants to play for a contender. Um, so I don't know if that this would change that in any way, shape, or form. Probably not. So who can they get uh, going into the season for Brian Reynolds? I think it's a good place to be to, to be able to get somebody going into the season rather than at the trade deadline when maybe the Pirates might look a little more desperate to unload him. Um, but uh, you know, who knows? Maybe McCutcheon can can rally these young guys and 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 get them going. He hit 17 home runs last year, 27 the year before that. But 
batting average was way low, down in the two two twenty range, I think, the last couple of years. So we'll have to see. But it is a nice story at the very least. You know, it, it, the I'm not a big numbers guy. I'm not a big stat nerd for baseball. Um, you know, I I generally stop at slugging percentage, but I do know the OPS number. Um, and he hasn't had one over 800 since his last year, the pirates, there was a one year, an exception, but he only played like 50 some games, uh, with the Phillies. So you know, he didn't, didn't really have a full season. So yes, his offense has, his offensive production has been down by and large. Uh, even though you mentioned the 27 homers he hit two seasons ago, his average was like in the two twenties, uh, last year, slightly better two thirty seven, but. I don't think again, like I don't think they're looking at this from an offensive production point of view. This is this is a a locker room. This is a uh, a clubhouse. Uh, This is a a, you know, the team's full of young uh, rising up and comers with Cruz and and Hayes already kind of in that nucleus. Um, Actually, I don't think this has anything to do with Reynolds. I don't think this impacts what happens with Reynolds. if anything, maybe it helps strengthen that bond. Someone like McCutcheon, who knows what it means, who knows what who knows what this team means to him, uh, who and and Reynolds has a lot of similar characteristics of, of when when McCutcheon was in his prime. Maybe he can kind of pass that torch, like you know, like yeah, it's not ideal. Just <laughs> the 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 team doesn't spend enough money. They don't build enough. They, you know, you, you might get traded anyway, but um, there are occasional signs that the team is, tr- has, is, is trying. And, uh, you know, I, sometimes when it, when a, when a relationship is fractured, it's just, it's probably just going to end on a, on a sour note at some point. Uh, but I still think that this is a salvageable relationship. Um uh, at, at its at its core, I mean, look, they already signed him to a, a smaller extension a couple years ago. So, like, and so you know they want him. Uh, they're also asking for Juan Soto type of trade value, which they're not going to get. So, you know, they're they're going to have to kind of live in this environment and try to work something out uh, sooner than later. Um, but, you know, again, I go back to the, the veteran leadership. Um, uh, G-Man Choi, Carlos Santana, Vince Velasquez, uh, Austin Hedges, who's one of the worst hitting catchers in the league, but as a defensive uh, gem behind the plate um, with some young pitchers, uh, prospects uh, down the hall. Rich Hill, 43-year-old Rich Hill can still – he's they all have, like, quality major league experience. And you might be able to like ship those guys, Santana and Choi and Hill. You might be able to ship those guys for better pieces down the road. Um, I, I think I'm kind of, you know, in a vacuum, when you see these acquisitions, you're like, what, what are they doing? Like what Santana got left in the tank? What, what can you, know, what is Hill doing on this team? Um, but it's not just one guy. It's not just a name. They're just, you know, trying to get a, a small headline with. They're, they're collecting valuable experience to go with some really um, high potential youth. Uh, and maybe that combo, no, they're not going to finish with a winning record, but maybe they won't finish with a hundred losses either. Maybe they're in, you know, maybe they can scrape together 75 wins and show some progress That's uh, the- and, and, they, and learn and learn along the way. You know, I, I don't think we can go through another 90 or 100 loss season. I, I I get it. It probably was necessary to get some of these picks, but, um, you know, it, it's not – we can't continue down that path for sure. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, I was looking at some of the numbers and their payroll is $66 million. There's only two teams with lower payrolls. Uh, I'm here in Alameda, California, about three miles to the Oakland Coliseum where the A's play. Their payroll was $48 million last year to R66. Baltimore was $44 million. I don't think, you know, I, I think they can certainly bring these young players up uh, and they can certainly aim at 500. But 
when you're going up against the Dodgers at 270 million, the Mets at 268, the Yankees at 252, and the Phillies at 244, or you just go right across the bay to where I work in San Francisco, that's $162 million payroll for the Giants. Until they start spending twice what they're spending, I don't know how you can expect better results. No, actually, that 66 sounds actually a little higher than I might have anticipated. Um, not to say that they are being competitive with their money. It's just uh, st- we, we come from a we come from a franchise that once spent less money than Albert Bell was making in the entire season in '97, and that team actually competed for a division for a while. That, that I mean, the, so 66 sounds like a lot from from our perspective. Uh, but it's not. I mean, what is third lowest? It's it's not even. It's still laughable. Um, wh- where do you see that? The he had he he turned. I don't know if he turned down, but the Mets were highly interested in him. Um, he would not have started on that team. Uh, on this team, I still don't know if he, he he. I don't see him as a full-time starter, but I could see him paired with. Uh, you know, C- Connor Joe and, and, and Reynolds and uh, 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 Swinski and, you know, still maybe a fourth outfielder, but but there's also the DH factor. Uh, you probably have Choi and Santana taking up those roles. But I could see him, you know, getting 130 games in and, and you know, four or 500 at-bats and still, you know, like you said, you know, he's still got the 15, 20 homers in him. Um, good base runner. I don't see him just as being a a reserve, I, I guess is what I'm saying. Whereas he might have been more of a reserve on the, someone like the Mets. Well, time will tell. Um, I do think that Jack Zawinski showed a lot of promise last year. Certainly has the power. Um, but then he went into a pretty bad slump, you know. Um, I, I think that they have to be very tactful about how they – mix that up because you don't want Sawinski um, to regress anymore. Um, I, if I recall correctly, he went down to the minors in the middle of the year, which I wonder what that did for his confidence. But, you know, I think it's got to be all about McCutcheon building up these young guys and being a elder statesman, the, the leader in the locker, in the clubhouse, uh, taking some guys like that under his wing and, teaching him what he knows because who really has been there? Um, I I can't think of a a legit veteran that they would be impressed with like him. So I hope that at the end of the day, if Sawinski is the better player, I mean, you don't want to, you got to play who's the best player, but it's a, it's a, it's an exciting story, but how they manage that I think is going to be really an interesting and critical piece to all. Yeah, and at some point, you know, that, that transition is going to happen. You're going to have to get the younger guys in there more than him. They're not going to trot him out there when they're, you know, 20 games below 500 every day for sure. Um, uh, and they're probably not going to, you know, they're not going to do him a disservice by making him play when he's if he's batting, you know, 220, you know, for the season. Uh, the average certainly wasn't there last year, but uh, there was a span in June and July where he hit 291, uh, seven home runs and 29 RBI. So, you know, the, the streaks are still there. Uh, and wouldn't that be a, a, a story if he could, you know, rebound with a 250, 260 average and get 20 pops? And um, I mean, the whole thing sounds like a good story. Uh, you know, it's probably too good to be true. But as we said in 1997, why not us? Why not? <laughs> now, some fans at that stadium, I mean, it looks terrible. Uh, it looks absolutely terrible when you see the empty seats. I'm not blaming the fans. I can understand why the seats are empty. Uh, but given the ballpark that they play in, um, it, it looks terrible. So getting some fans in there and somehow putting together some wins and, and getting an owner to finally spend some mon- money would be a beautiful thing. Uh, it well could just be a pipe dream. It's, it's been 10 years since we've seen a beautiful thing. But, uh, yeah, it could be, a, could be a great story. And at least for now... We got a little bucko fever back in the blood. So for at Joel Closer, Joe Alexander, this is Adam Kahn at AJ Kahn 95. This is the Black and Gold Daily Blitz. Hopefully we'll have some more good pirate stories uh, coming down the pike.